Spike is a free email application that presents your email in a chat thread-like user interface. Although it is available on iOS, macOS, Android and Windows, in this video I'm going to focus mainly around the iPad application. So it is a cross-platform application, but that comes at a cost. For instance, there is support for split-screen functionality on the iPad, but there is no support for multiple instances, iOS shortcuts, pointer animations or even keyboard shortcuts. So what is special about Spike Email? If you have an ongoing email conversation, it won't be a single long email that contains repeated to and from sections. Instead, it looks like you're communicating on a threaded messaging chat. To begin with, you get all the basic email app features. You can sign into multiple accounts like an email application should, including Outlook, Gmail, etc. You can even have different signatures for each account. All your emails are presented in their own inboxes, but you can move to a unified inbox if you want to do that. All your newsletters, offers, update emails, and all that kind of junk is sent to another section which is separate from your inbox called Other. It does a decent job at identifying what emails should be priority and what shouldn't be, but if you find something that is categorized in the wrong section, you can change the rule for that email or for that sender. Staying on inbox, you can swipe left on an email item to either archive or delete that email depending on how fast or slow you swipe. If you swipe right, you get an options menu. This is where you would choose the priority of an email. You can also enable auto archive from a sender right from here. This menu, in my opinion, is your friend if you're trying to get to an inbox zero lifestyle. We're still going to stay in inbox and talk about the pinned contacts on the top row. This is helpful if you want to start a new conversation with a contact. Speaking of new email conversations, you can create a new email from the create email icon on the bottom of the screen. Next to the new email icon, you have an option to review your calendar, create groups for email communications and manage your contacts. Let's go back to calendar for a second. So the calendar functionality on this app is kind of limited. You can review your calendar in a very tiny column on the left side of your entire screen instead of using the entire display of your iPad or your computer. You can create new events. It is almost a fully featured experience with invitees, travel time, FaceTime, and multiple alerts. But absence of third-party conference app integration is very much apparent in a post-pandemic world. Let's get back to emails. When you start an email conversation or reply to an existing email conversation, you have options to just send text responses. Or you can insert images directly from the camera on your device or from your media library. Just like any other good texting application, this email application has a GIF search engine. If none of that fits your needs, you can also respond with an audio recording or send your location using the Apple Maps API. Other than being able to attach a file from your local storage, you can attach a file directly from one of your cloud services such as OneDrive or Google Drive. Then there is group functionality on this application. This allows you to create a group of people that you work with or a group of family so you can communicate with them easily. So there are a few features slash quirks of this application that I couldn't find a way to put in their dedicated sections. So I'm just going to list them out here for you all. There is an option to add quick responses. Sounds like a great feature, but I don't know how to use it and I wasn't able to figure it out. So if it's functional, that should be a good feature. On a smaller screen device, such as your iPhone, when you delete an email, instead of going to the next email, it goes back to your inbox screen. If you're trying to delete a bunch of emails at once, this is not ideal functionality for me. Some emails have a delete button directly available to you, but then there are some emails that only have the archive button that is easily accessible to you. And in order to access the delete button, you need to press the three dots button, then you need to tap on delete, and then it gives you a confirmation message before you can delete all your emails. This, in my opinion, is a little too restrictive. The lack of keyboard shortcuts kind of makes it hard to select multiple emails at once. And if you select each email by individually tapping on it, it only gives you an option to either archive or delete those emails. Emails. There's no option to move them to a separate folder, so that also makes it harder to manage multiple emails on this application. 